I'm Mark from Marmoset and this is Getting to Know Hexels, a series of video tutorials. In this video I will show you how to create a scrolling parallax effect. Firstly I created this text based title in Photoshop. I made sure to save it as a PNG with a transparent background. That makes it easier when it comes to editing in Hexels. I'm going to create a new document with the template set to squares. This is because the image I'm going to import will align better with a square shaped grid for the purpose of this pixel style image. Here are my saved image files on the left. Here on the right, my canvas size settings. Notice here I'm in pixel mode and my canvas size is 226 by 136. Because I'm aiming for a low res pixel style, you can see when I drag my image onto the canvas, it is too big. So instead, I'm going to go to File, Import Image and select my file there. Here I can choose Rescale for Current Canvas, Aliased. Aliased means the edges will remain pixelated and not be smoothed out. Here I'm rescaling the image back to the canvas size I originally started with, 226 by 136. Because I forgot to alias the edges of my text in Photoshop, I'm just going to clean them up here. I use the selection tool to copy and paste the hexels portion of my image so that I can change its colour without affecting anything else. I'm using the hue saturation effect in layer properties. Here I'm using the line tool to help the edges of the text stand out a little clearer. Here I draw some cracks on a new pixel layer. With the dungeon attack text I do the same thing where I paste to a new layer, clean up the edges and hue saturation effect the colour. To create an outline, this time I'm going to use the flood fill tool. This is an option when using the outline tool, which is O on the keyboard. Again with super and turbo, I clean up the edges. I'm happy with my title and I could merge them all into one layer, but I want to keep them separate just in case I need to change anything later on. I'm going to group all of the layers together so I can scale and move them all as one. So I hold down shift on the keyboard and click each of the layers I want in my group. Then I click this folder icon at the bottom here. Here's my group and I'm going to rename it Logo All. As you can see, I can resize and move all of the layers at the same time by having them in a group. This resizing and moving is called a transform. It's also T on the keyboard. Now let's move on to the parallax effect. Firstly, I'm going to roughly block out my animation and then add detail later. These tall rectangles will be my trees. Here I've switched to timeline mode. Notice the frame count at the bottom of the screen is set to 30. This is the length of my animation. For the animation to loop correctly, I need the next tree along in my scroll to end up in the same position as the first tree. To animate a transform, the key icon on the transform sublayer must be clicked blue. I create a new layer for each level of depth in my scene. Notice I lighten the colour for each layer to simulate distance or haze. Once I have two trees on a layer that loop correctly, I copy and paste the exact distance between them to fill out the rest of each layer. Now I press play to see how my animation looks. Once I'm happy that all of the layers loop correctly, I start adding more detail.
I copy and paste each area of detail. Each tree on each layer must be identical to loop correctly. OK, let's turn all of the layers back on and see how it looks. To recap, with this example, on each layer, tree B must end up in the start position of tree A. Also, notice the scale and distance of the trees on each layer form a triangle. You could use this as a mental reminder if you're not sure your composition is going to plan. Now it's time to reintroduce the title image. I'm going to create a drop shadow behind the text. To do this, I right click and duplicate the title all group. I drag the new group layer below the original group so that it is behind it in my scene. I click the cog icon at the bottom to bring up the layer properties window. This lets me select hue saturation and reduce the lightness. I can then go to the opacity slider for the same group and adjust it to reduce the intensity of the shadow. I want to animate the colour of the text in my title. Because black, white and grey shades aren't affected by hue and saturation, I can affect the whole group without it changing the colour of the stone hexels title. Notice when I create a hue saturation effect, it creates a sublayer. Make sure the blue key icon is selected. Super and Turbo are both red. I want them to change to yellow and back again over the course of my animation. To do this, I'm going to go to the halfway point of my animation, which is frame 15. I'm going to use Hue and change it to yellow. Then at the end of the animation, frame 30, I'm going to change it back to red so that the color will match up when the animation loops. To create the effect of the press start text fading in and out, I simply change the opacity values from maximum to minimum three times across my timeline. Here I drag the Marmoset LLC text onto my canvas, transform and change opacity. To make sure my exported animation will loop seamlessly, I need to go to the animation settings and set property looping to approach last. This will ignore the last frame of the animation so we don't get frame 1 and frame 30 which are identical causing a slight pause. Let's take a look at the final animation. Thanks for watching, be sure to check out the website for more Hexels tutorials, help and information.